stories you care about. WLBB, Carrollton, News Talk, 1330, FM 106.3. It is now 8.30. Good Friday morning. Welcome to the WLBB Community Voice Program here on News Talk 1330, FM 106.3. Also streaming live this morning on the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page. I'm your host this morning, Colin Worthington. Thanks to Steve and Josh for uh, handing me my show back, uh, at least for one day this week. And uh, Steve does appreciate all the fan mail ladies. He would like you to uh, kind of slow down the pictures, though. They do make him a little uncomfortable. But uh, Steve will be back here in the seat on Monday. Now, my guest this morning, I reached out to her a couple of weeks ago because I had a question about one of the um, one of the questions on the upcoming ballot, on the presidential ballot. Uh, I believe it's, it's, it's the first referendum on there. There's two questions, two amendments and one referendum. There's referendum, there's amendment one, I think a referendum one, but we're referendum A. Referendum A is what yes. they are. I had this question, so I reached out to her because every time I looked up some information trying to get uh, ideas about it myself, it always mentioned, as in, you know, this could benefit Habitat for Humanity. So I said, all right, let's find out locally and get a good idea about this. So uh, she got up some good information, and she's going to help us out with that, as well as discuss in detail what West Georgia Habitat Humanity is doing, how it's dealing with COVID, as, uh, as we do tend to talk about on every show. And uh, let me introduce you to her. Her name is Jennifer Shun. She is Executive Director of West Georgia Habitat for Humanity, and we appreciate her coming on the show this morning. And I will tell you, she does not drink coffee. <laughs> but uh, I've had about five cups already. This should be an entertaining show. But again, thank you for uh, stopping by. Thank you so much for uh, having me. And if you hear something during the program this morning, if you're watching us on Facebook Live, if you have a question or comment, please post that up there. And I promise to uh, take a look at those and share those uh, with uh, with Jennifer this morning. First of all, Jennifer, let's introduce you. Um, uh, where are you from? What you doing here? How long you been with West Georgia Habitat for Humanity? Well, thank you so much for asking. I am Jennifer Shun, and I have been in the West Georgia area since 2000. My husband and I are both natives of Wyoming, and we came here after a little brief stint at Southern Illinois University in Carbondale. My husband took a professorship um, at the University of West Georgia to teach sculpture and he has been the actual chair of the art department now art philosophy and history for um he started that i guess in 2006 and i started with habitat in 2005 so i have 15 years experience now with west georgia habitat for humanity do you think you guys have gotten enough exposure over the last 15 years um we did initially Mm -hmm. we had a lot of exposure um i think that because we are a ministry that's so hands-on and you know most people know us as um, neighbors coming together to help a neighbor and people want to be hands-on with that and so initially all of our builds we had a lot of community volunteers 120 to 150 people per build Uh, west georgia habitat yes that's correct so the we've built this is the start of our 38th habitat home but the first 33 habitat homes were built by jerry driver of driver and associates and jerry um actually helped start this west georgia affiliate so we are an affiliate of Habitat for Humanity International. We serve both Carroll and Harrelson counties. Um, We incorporated 1987. So we've been around for a Mm -hmm. really, really long time. Um, Jerry actually helped start that. He's part of a group called Caravanners that go all over the country and help build. Um, And so he was already a strong Habitat volunteer. Local group of people, Mike and Linda Handyside, um, they all came together and started this affiliate and then Jerry built the first 33 habitat homes of the 38. Um, He tried to retire a couple of times and I convinced him to come back and help us. Um, His last builds were actually two homes we built side by side in 2014. One was um, fully funded by Southwire which we greatly appreciate Um, and the other was funded by Habitat and they were built side by side and that was Jerry's kind of last hurrah. Well you dropped a lot of good nuggets there for people. I'm, I'm sure the majority of us do know what yeah. Habitat for Humanity is, but I mean, give us the overall mission and, and how things are accomplished with that. Okay, perfect. So Habitat for Humanity is um, a nonprofit housing ministry. And what our whole vision is, is a world where everyone has a decent place to live. We are actually present. We have affiliates in all 50 states. We also are present in over 70 countries. So it's a global ministry. And what we do is partner with low income to modest income families 
families that have that same dream that most of us do to own their own home. Um, but because of either past credit history or um, just not having a significant enough income to meet the needs of conventional bank financing, they can't traditionally get a loan. Um, what Habitat does is what we call a hand up and not a handout. So we work with families that are working. They have modest incomes. Um, right now, like in our service area, Carolyn Harrelson County, a minimum income for a family of four would be $26,000. They cannot make over $50,000. So we serve a population that's 30 to 60% of the median household income. Um, they're going to both invest their time and build with the builder and the volunteers they're going to work side by side and do 100 to 200 hours of sweat equity labor and then they actually purchase the home from habitat which i think is something that most people don't know most people think this is like you build a small home and you give it away to a family that's I'm picturing it like receiving governmental program you know, assistance. Um, that's not the case. This is serving kind of, it's bridging a gap between those of us that maybe can get traditional financing and those that are living with government assistance. It's that middle range of people that are struggling to make ends meet, but they're out there every day putting their, you know, time to work. The people who benefit from this, from Habitat for Humanity, is there a waiting list? Is there an application process? How do you guys find out about those people? So for us, it, it varies for every affiliate. But in our service area, we don't start the application process until we've raised the money to build a Habitat home. So that could be anywhere, like right now, a three-bedroom, one-and-a-half bath. We're trying to build for $78,000. So that is significantly less than what the cost of per square foot is for traditional build. We're able to do that because we have such strong business partners, subcontractors that donate their time and service, general contractor right now is Ray Lynn. They are donating their services. RKR has built several homes for us. It's really that kind of um, cumulative effort from civic organizations that donate individuals, businesses, churches. All of that money comes together. And once we have that money raised, we start the application process. It takes us about 60 to 90 days. Um, there are strict rules. You have to have lived or worked in Carroll or Harrelson County for at least 12 months consecutively. What that does is allows us to invest in people who are already vested in the community. If we work with transient families, we're really not investing in our own community. So we have that residency requirement. They do have to meet that minimum income that I talked about, 30 to 60 percent of the median household. We look at their credit history. We look at their income. We make sure that their debt to income ratio is less than 43 percent and that the cost of a habitat home will not be more than 30 percent of their income and i will tell you like in our world right now in the united states especially we have about 11 million people that are paying over 50 percent of their income toward housing and we're in a housing crisis and we have to do something to fix that so for me, the only thing that holds Habitat for Humanity back from serving a larger number of people is that financial component, raising that $78,000 to $90,000. Jennifer Shun is Executive Director of West Georgia Habitat for Humanity, our guest on this morning's Community Voice program, giving, I and mean, you've given us tons of great information this morning. A lot of things are really striking that I could uh, angle off and ask several questions. Before we do take our break, um, as far as the application process, so after every, you wait until you guys have the money to build a house, but, um, and then you do that process. After that house is done, do you throw away all those applications and open up a new process every time you're going to build? We can hold applications for one year. So if we have three families that qualify, if we were able to build more than one home within that fiscal year, we could take one Keep of those, those people yeah. but typically it takes us 12 months to 18 months to raise the money so we would start the application process over but we've had multiple families that apply one year and don't qualify we counsel them we help them with the financial aspect tell them what would make them a better applicant the next year and we've had two families that in their second year qualified and were selected very nice. You, you recently uh, were able to uh, collect enough money to build a house, and we'll talk about that. I believe it's number 38 for you guys, right? It is. 38. And we'll also talk about uh, a fundraising effort that's going on. I think uh, you need to register for it by the end of this month anyway, right? Correct. And uh, that's a fundraising effort. We'll talk about that, too. And we will talk about um, the uh, what's on the ballot this year as well with uh, Jennifer. Taking our first break right now at... 
839 Community Voice brought to you by Tanner Health System, Oak Mountain Academy here on News Talk 1330 and FM 106.3. At Oak Mountain Academy, our daily schedule includes convocation, prayer, and the Pledge of Allegiance. By doing so, we build a family-like community where all students grow and flourish and personal faith is encouraged. Through community service and a historical approach to biblical study, our students are taught the value of the warrior way, honesty, respect, and responsibility. Oak Mountain Academy, we are a family creating legacies. To learn more, visit oakmountain.us. For more than 70 years, you have turned to Tanner Health System for your health care needs. As our community moves forward, Tanner is here for you. Strong, safe, and close to home. Routine medical appointments, urgent elective surgeries, and imaging are back on the calendar at our hospitals and Tanner Medical Group practices. With the safety of our patients, staff, and community, always our top priority. Learn more at Tanner.org. Hashtag We Are Tanner Strong. That's Tanner.org. Hashtag We Are Tanner Strong. Eight forty-two. Welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice Program here on News Talk thirteen thirty FM one hundred six point three. Also this morning, streaming live on the News Talk thirteen thirty Facebook page, which I encourage you to check out, so you can uh, uh, post your questions and comments to the page during our program. Jennifer Shun, Executive Director of West Georgia Habitat for Humanity, and believe it or not, folks, she's a grandma. <laughs> it's true. Yes. Don't tell anybody that, Carl. But, yes, but congratulations. Just two weeks. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Two weeks old today. First grandkid? It is. And again, congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. I guess Jennifer uh, with us to talk about Habitat for Humanity. Also, the initial reason I reached out to her a couple weeks ago was to uh, talk about this uh, Referendum A yep. is what it was. It's on the ballots right now. Early voting going on. Today's the last day this week to vote early, but there's two more weeks after uh, you know, next week and the week after you can vote early before the November 3rd election. And uh, on our ballots this year is a question for Referendum A, which establishes a tax exemption for certain real property owned by charities. Now, what it does, the measure would exempt from taxes property owned by charities for the purpose of building or repairing single-family homes to be financed by the charity and then sold to individuals using no-interest loans. The referendum is aimed at providing a tax break to charities such as Habitat for Humanity. Every time I've read that from somewhere, they've referenced Habitat for Humanity. Now, once the property is sold to an individual, it would be taxed at fair market value. Proponents say, supporters say the measure would aid the construction of affordable housing. Opponents say the measure would deprive local schools and governments of some tax revenue until the property is sold to a homeowner. Apparently, that's not been a problem here in Carroll County. Nothing would change, but Correct. you're actually you're, you're hoping to benefit other communities but yes. with your support on this. The property likely would then generate more tax revenue than it did as a vacant lot. Um, so yeah, you give, give us your opinion on that. Working for Habitat for Humanity, how beneficial would this be to nonprofits such as uh, Habitat for Humanity? And then and then I guess you yeah, further explain why why I suggested that it's not going to affect you, your group, at all. Sure, definitely. So definitely in the state of Georgia, there is a significant need to have this referendum passed. Um, We have a lot of affiliates that have a lot of undeveloped lot that they are paying significant property taxes on. Um, If that money is exempt and they can save that money, they can turn around and put that in their fund for humanity to help them build homes on some of those lots. Um, As you said in Carroll County for me that's not an issue Um, we have a board of assessors that has recognized for years at least in the 15 years I've been there that um, undeveloped land held by habitat can be property tax exempt Um, right now I hold eight pieces of property over on Avalon Drive in Carrollton those properties probably average about $60 a year in property taxes. So it would save me roughly less than $500. Um, As I said, I'm already tax exempt on those properties, so it doesn't necessarily affect me. But when I think about like Habitat for Humanity Atlanta um, or Northwest Metro Atlanta Habitat, those properties with more significant um, tax 
um, value, I guess, would really benefit because it can save them in the long run. And I think a lot of our smaller rural affair affiliates um, in smaller communities like ours that aren't tax exempt already, you know, even that $500 savings, that turns around and that can buy you mm. linoleum for a home or LVT or something like that for rooms, some carpeting. Any dollar that we save or any dollar that comes in will be used towards building, and that really can be significant for them. So please vote yes on Referendum A. West Georgia Habitat for Humanity also works with Harrelson County, We right? do. So that's, yes. is it different in Harrelson County than it is in Carroll? It is a little different in Harrelson County. Um, Harrelson County Board of Assessors has an application process. So they look at what is the intent of or purpose of the organization, the nonprofit that's applying for that tax exemption, and what is the land being used for. So when our purpose is to build or renovate or rehab homes and that land is sitting undeveloped, that doesn't necessarily serve our purpose. So some of our property in Harrelson County has been been exempted and others have not been but again it's it's not as significant for us financially because we don't own a lot of land in those areas um but yeah it could make a difference 37 homes yes you guys have built so Currently. far you're, mm-hmm. and you're hoping to build this 38 you're expecting to build the 38th has COVID affected that? Has it delayed that process? Um, it hasn't necessarily delayed the process. Habitat for Humanity International does have a hold on um, all volunteer activity right now. We're very blessed. Ray Lynn is helping us build again, and, and a lot of their subcontractors have stepped forward to say they'll help as well. It is going to be different to not have the community volunteer aspect because a lot of our donors come from our volunteer base. So we like that hands-on opportunity. We want to put people's faith into action, and we can't necessarily do that during this build um, but we are proceeding the ground you know has been broken we are getting ready to lay the concrete foundation and um, in the next couple of weeks we'll have the wall framing happening so it is 38th habitat home is underway right now you said you have eight i guess eight properties that are under habitat for humanity right now correct so that of the 38 that are built what do some of them end up being sold out of Habitat for Humanity community to where they're no, absolutely that, okay. not. All land held by Habitat will have a ho- Habitat home developed on it. We typically are able to build one home per year in our service area. We'd like to get that back up to two homes per year, but right now that's kind of where we're at. It may even take 18 months to build. It's really just dependent on how much financial support we can bring in. But no, all that land that's held by Habitat will have Habitat homes built on those. Do you keep in touch with those families when, in all these homes? I mean, because I I'm, I'm sure you met them and you've probably had per- real personal conversations with them and, and seen how appreciative they are that uh, they were able to participate I'm in so gra- glad that you asked me that. Um, of the homeowners that we've built with since I've been in the program, I get to meet them after they're selected. I'm not part of that family selection. I do the financial review because I am a loan uh, mortgage originator. But after that financial review, it goes to an outside committee and they go and do a home visit and see what the need for safe, decent, affordable housing is. And then they come back and make a recommendation. This is the family for this year. Then I work with them through their sweat equity. I teach them Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University class. And then we are really working side by side and then my hat changes and I become the mortgager so I'm the the bank so then I'm the person that contacts them when their payments are late if that happens um but yes it's beautiful in 15 years I've watched families that you know have a six-year-old that now is in college so I get to watch these families grow we have great relate it's relational ministry really and I become kind of a little you know offset of their family maybe we can get you to come back on the show and teach us the Dave Ramsey yes economics. that would be wonderful Westy do that. <laughs> great the, concept very good uh, uh, Jennifer Shun is our guest this morning executive director of West Georgia Habitat for Humanity and before we do take our break can you tell us anything about the family that's going to benefit now do you feel comfortable talking about their situation oh, yes actually this this is a woman that um, I met on the green belt about five years ago and we had a really wonderful walk together and I kind of she saw a habitat shirt and stopped me to ask me about it um, and at the time was not you know in a position but she's been in an apartment for the same apartment for 20 years it's never rooms have never been painted never any upkeep um, and she has two daughters that have some medical challenges. They're both on the spectrum. One of them has um, mild cerebral palsy as well. And she is a full-time caregiver and will be. And they are 16 years of age. Um, 
and she is in the last couple of years went through a divorce and she is just ready to own her own home and make that home a place where those girls can live in perpetuity if they need to um, which one of them probably will and so this is going to give them an opportunity to have strength stability and um, you know independence really through shelter We'll take our final break here, come back and talk about the future of West Georgia Habitat for Humanity, ideas and hopes and dreams, and we'll also talk about uh, the uh, fundraiser they have that's uh, coming up, and we'll do that after this break. I guess before we go to a break, can you give a big shout-out to your board of directors? How many people are on that board, and, and can you remember each of their names? Uh, we'll try. I have 10 people that serve on my board of directors. My president is Stephen Hill. My vice president is Jared Jones. Uh, treasurer is Pam Robinson. Cisco Baldazon serves as our corporate secretary. Sheree Schrader. Cheryl Thomas Hill, Lisa Robison, Jeff Lanzer, Teresa Wright. No Derek Newton? No Derek Newton. Has he ever been I, on the board? But Derek Newton has, no, he's not ever been on my board, but That's I probably know. probably the only one he has I know on. Derek very well, and he has listened to my presentation and been very supportive of us, but has not served on the board. I'd say he's tuning in this morning, but he's in South Carolina. <laughs> he's, at, he's at the beach right now. He'll probably watch know. it later, and he'll be sad he missed it. All right, time yep. right now is uh, 851. We'll come back and uh, wrap up our program. Community Voice brought to you by Tanner Health System, Oak Mountain Academy, here on News Talk 1330, FM 106.3. For more than 70 years, you have turned to Tanner Health System for your health care needs. As our community moves forward, Tanner is here for you. Strong, safe, and close to home. Routine medical appointments, urgent elective surgeries, and imaging are back on the calendar at our hospitals and Tanner Medical Group practices. With the safety of our patients, staff, and community, always our top priority. Learn more at Tanner.org. Hashtag we are Tanner Strong. That's Tanner.org. Hashtag we are Tanner Strong. At Oak Mountain Academy, our academic excellence shines through innovation and a personalized educational experience. Our pre-K 3 through 12th grade environment offers a family-oriented atmosphere. We are an independent school with faith-based values and an academy honor code. Our academic standards prepare our students for college and beyond. I'm Patrick Duran, Headmaster, inviting you to visit us on the mountain or at oakmountain.us. Come see how our warriors are creating legacies. It is 8.52. Welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice Program here on News Talk 1330, FM 106.3. Our guest this morning is the Executive Director of West Georgia Habitat for Humanity, Jennifer Shun. And I am Colin Worthington. We're streaming live on Newstalk1330.com, also the WLBB Facebook page this morning. So if you've got a question to ask us in the next eight minutes or comment, I encourage you to, uh, to pass that along. Our Facebook page gained a new follower during this program. Excellent. His name's Kevin. Do you know him? We uh, again, Jennifer Shun, our guest this morning. Um, as far as people volunteering, people who want to be part of West Habitat, West West Georgia Habitat for Humanity, people who may you know, kind of like me hadn't heard about it in a while, sure. and, and may have missed out on the opportunities par- to participate. How should they get in touch with you? How long are they going to have to wait to actually participate? Do you think? Um, oh, I don't think any of us know that answer about when we're going to be able to have volunteers. I think you know, hopefully things will change soon with COVID. Um, With a global ministry, we just, you know, we're waiting for Habitat for Humanity International to kind of open up across those 70 countries. So we don't know at this time, but there are many other ways that people can get involved. Um, I think, you know, obviously advocating for awareness for what's going on in our housing market is very important. I think um, the Times Georgian recently had a great article about what's happening locally with affordable housing. And I think getting out, voting yes for that referendum, really acknowledging that we have a problem in our community. I'm just going to throw this out there. If you don't already know this, a one bedroom, one bath um, apartment in Carrollton right now averages about $984 a month. That's a 57% increase over last year. That's huge. When you make seven twenty-five an hour to afford that type of modest one bedroom, one bath home, you'd need to work a 90 hour work week. Mm. 
And, and the amazing thing is, though, you think about the interest rates right now, you could double that size and still pay a, a significant less. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is one beautiful thing about Habitat. We didn't really touch on. This is a 20 year no interest mortgage. And um, like this house that we're building right now that we will sell for $78,000, um, that home's going to be $325 a month principal mortgage payment. That's pretty amazing. That's okay. The highest that we have is we built two four bedroom, two bath homes recently in the same area, and those average three seventy five a month principal mortgage payment. Um, our early mortgages were eighty two dollars and fifty cents a month, and those are you know I'm seeing those twenty year mortgages be paid off since I've been there fifteen years, mm-hmm. and that's probably the most incredible thing is watching someone pay that home off. Time right now is eight fifty six, and Jennifer, as I was told before the show, I mean you're a star. You were all on it. We, I mean, really, you've given us a lot of good information this morning. We're going to have about four minutes uh, left in our show right now. Um, you do have a, a, um, a fundraiser coming up. Yep, the a virtual West event. West Georgia. Oh, it's virtual? It's virtual. It has to be virtual. All right, West Georgia Habitat for Humanity, <laughs> Get Healthy 2020. Yeah. So basically what we want to do is we're over on Avalon Drive in Carrollton and there is a little spur from the green belt that drops onto Avalon Drive. We want to have a 30K bike ride and a 5K run basically at your leisure. We're going to have three different registration periods, one in October, one in November, and one in December when we complete the home. Basically things that will be happening outside the home that you will be able to visually see. We want to encourage people to register. It's a little fundraiser for us but it gets people from the green belt down to the habitat home to see it being built since we can't use community volunteers we want people to see how what that looks like and to meet the family if they're out there helping um, to be able to meet the neighbors there's a habitat home on each side of the one that we're building so you can kind of see what we're doing and then directly across the road when you leave the green belt on your left basically everything from there down to the first house on your right is habitat owned property and you can see see that those are going to be future habitat homes we're building kind of a mini habitat neighborhood over in this area and I think it's a section of town that most people don't ever go to they don't see and I think it's important that we understand how our neighbors live and what that looks like Do you have all the sponsors you need for this already? I always need sponsors. And every dollar counts. So even if it's a $25 gift to Habitat, it makes a difference. But for this particular event, our sponsorships start at $250 and go up to um, the highest level of of our Builders Club, which is a $5,000 gift. And all the money that we're raising right now actually goes to build the 39th Habitat home. So we already have the money in the bank for the 38th that we're building right now, but we're trying to raise money to build again now. Next year. All right, Jennifer Shun, Executive Director of West Georgia Habitat for Humanity, our guest on this morning's program. If you missed any of it, I do encourage you to go back and listen to it on our podcast, archived on the Newstalk1330.com website. And of course, it is on the Newstalk1330 Facebook page. You can go back and listen to that. A lot of good information this morning. Uh, as we do close out, uh, contact information. How do people learn more about West Georgia Habitat for Humanity? If they have further questions, can they contact you? Absolutely. Um, I would say go to the website, westgahabitat.org, or my phone number is 678-390-6932. I'm always available. Um, and we, of course, are on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. So. And when you call her, make sure you program it in your phone that it's her, because when she calls you back and you don't recognize the number, you let it go to voicemail and you might miss some important It does stuff. come back from my personal cell. So, yep. Jennifer, thank you for thank coming you out so this morning. Thank you so much for having me. It I appreciate great to meet you and it was great to hear about all that you're doing for the community and we do appreciate you guys at home this morning listening to us on news talk 1330 fm 106.3 and of course on the news talk 1330 wlbb facebook page thanks to uh, joel brock for doing the cameras this morning steve graddick pushing all the buttons and again steve will be back here on monday's community voice program at 8 30 i believe he's hosting toys for tots and uh, that might be a bigger program to uh, pay good attention to this year of course I mean, as, as all of our nonprofits and things like that are but uh monday morning 8 30 steve graddick back in this seat do hope you have a great weekend stay tuned now for national headlines followed by your local news glenn beck rush limbaugh sean hannity our programming for this friday community voice